pink science fiction car. How 1980s. May the force be with you. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. This time around we're taking a look at another figure from the Studio 86 series. This time around it is RC. And once again we face the, the question of do we have a perfect RC figure? As many of them that we have had in the past have been disappointments. Starting back with the Le with the Legends line that was put out around the time of Titan's return. There was one that was released in Japan. But a lot of the toy shows and Transformer conventions did eventually get enough copies of that figure to sell. And while it was a decent representation of RC, the hands were a bit stiff, and they frequently broke when you would place the weapons into her hands. So, she had a little bit of a problem holding her weapons. Then, of course, we got a new version in the Earthrise line, which was initially well-received. It's just, unfortunately... With her having been a shell former, it was a rather big pain to transform her. And again, it disappointed a lot of the fans, especially since for some reason some of the paint job was changed. So while it did look like RC, it was not exactly RC. So now here we have the latest in the long line of RCs. And again, she is still a shell former. However, she does use an entirely different sculpt when compared to the Earthrise release. But of course, RC's also had a troubled history of being released within the toy line. She was planned initially to have been released in 1986 when the movie came out. A prototype was done of her, Unfortunately, they painted her in very odd colors instead of the predominantly white and pink that R.C. was in the movie. Thankfully, Hasbro decided they were not going to release that figure. She came up again as another figure in 1987. They were going to release her as a headmaster. As the animated series did depict the Headmasters before it was cancelled, and they showed that R.C. was going to become a Headmaster, and she would be binary bonded to Spike's son, Daniel. Which was a stupid idea to begin with, but... At any rate, Hasbro decided instead of modding the Chrome Dome figure to become R.C., they decided to pass up on her. R.C. would turn up again at the end of the line in 1990 when they would consider making her an Action Master. But again, Hasbro decided to turn it down. Which then became the unfortunate thing. As I've seen in a video posted several months back on the channel Half the Battle Timmer, he discussed a lot of the major 80s toy lines and their proportion of male to female figures being released. And while Transformers the cartoon did feature several prominent female characters, the entire toy line in the Generation 1 era did not release a single female character. Kind of a missed opportunity. Though they have been making up for it here in recent years. At any rate here, let's move RC aside and we'll take a look at her background. 
And as you can see, it's just like the one that we showed earlier in the month for Perceptor. It depicts the Battle of Autobot City. Which is fitting since that moment is when RC first appeared to us. Get this out of the way here and bring her back. Of course, there's no, it's no secret that when you look, take a good look at Transformers the movie, it was heavily influenced by Star Wars. Not only in the way some of the new characters were presented, but in the way some of them were designed and some of their overall looks. After all, if you take a look at Unicron's planetary mode, and you strip it of the giant horns and the ring, and you would have the original look for the Death Star. So after all, take a look at the plans that they showed in Star Wars, and you saw that the super laser was in the center, not offset onto the top of the station like we saw in the film. So if you go by that, Unicron and the Death Star do look pretty similar. RC, of course, here took some inspiration from uh, Carrie Fisher's character of Princess Leia, since of the side pieces here, the circular side pieces on her head, were definitely reminiscent of the cinnamon bun hairstyle that she sported in the 1977 film. And, of course, R.C. also did prove that she was no damsel in distress. She was just as willing and able to get into the fight. Especially as she showed up Hot Rod a few times in the film. Like, most notably during, the, during one of the other attacks on Autobot City, Hot Rod thought he needed to protect her, but instead it was R.C. that moved him out of the way of enemy fire. Let's take a look now at R.C.'s one accessory, and that is her gun. It is the more prominent handgun that we're used to her using. The unfortunate part is, is that her articulation will not allow you to have her hold it two-handed like we saw when she was inside Unicron. So that's a disappointment. That much I can say is a disappointment. I would have loved to have been able to adjust her arms a bit to make it look like she was holding her gun with both hands. And of course the gun does have some extra plug-ins, but really don't give you a lot of room on RC to plug it in on her. But you can insert it into her legs. So you can plug it into her upper thighs. You just gotta get everything out of the way so that you can do that. And she can kind of carry the gun in a similar fashion to Robocop. Except that hers is kept outside, not stored inside. Anybody else out there think that she would point her gun at somebody and go, Your move, creep? Maybe she did that in that early scene where there, Robocop shot the rapist, uh, shot the attempted rapist. I could see RC doing that. <laughs> now, let's take a look at RC's articulation. And of course, with her being a shell former, a lot of it is going to be hampered. Her head can turn from side to side, and it is on a bit of a ball joint, so it will rock up and down a bit. Her arms can be raised out about so far, and while they do rotate all the way around at the shoulder, again, you have to move the arm away from her backpack unit. Her arms do bend at the elbow, 90 degrees. And she does feature a swivel at the bicep, so she has G.I. Joe-style battle grip. 
She can be twisted a bit at her hips, so she does have a little bit of dance moves going there. We can spread her legs apart, almost into a full splits. It's a bit stiff to do that. She does have a thigh cut, so you can adjust her legs at the thigh. You can raise her leg at the hip just under 90 degrees, and you can bend her legs at the knees a little greater than 90 degrees. And she also does have rocking ankles. <clears throat> so all in all, she does have some decent articulation. Alrighty, let's get ready and transform RC. And as we said, since she uses a different sculpt, so it's not the same as any of the other releases. We start by popping her head up, just like that. And then we bring up the entire bit of the body, like so. You're going to rotate the head and her chest back a bit so that you can get her chest to stick in right between her shoulder pads here. And that will help form the front of the car. And then now we're going to try to adjust her arms. Excuse me a second, I gotta look at these instructions. Yeah, they said what I thought they say. You're gonna adjust her arms by raising them to go up, but you're also gonna get them to shift so that the arms, so that her hands will stick inside the bumper, the front bumper of the car. So, definitely be gentle. It takes a little bit of wiggle room to get them in there. And to try to get her arms down flat. There we go, that's better. May have to turn it so that our arms rotate at the bicep a bit so that they get totally underneath the car. Just like that. Once you've done that part, we'll come down here and you will twist her hips so that her legs are backwards now. As now we are going to raise them upwards to get them out of the way of the back. So that now we can start folding out things in the back. Then we gotta fold out the back wheels like so. And of course they want us to adjust things. Like reach in here and get this part folded out. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Something else we should point out real quickly. The pink fin does pop off very easily there. You just saw it. You just saw it go flying. We'll set it aside for the moment. Here we get the back end and we're going to fold it over. And of course, part of the way there, we're also going to fold out the side pieces here. And we also need to fold down the tail, the rear of the vehicle, so we can snap it into place. That way we got it in position. And 
And you'll also bring the side pieces into the side and lock them into place. They have a post that'll connect to the body, but they also have a secondary post that will connect to the slots in her shoulders. So make sure you get those locked in and secured. Just like that. Then once we've done that, we're going to stretch her legs all the way out the back. Then you will turn her legs at the thigh so that her heels are together. Because we're then going to fold them inwards. Try to keep them together and you'll see that they form a large post. Now when you bring her legs back in, this post should connect into a hole right in her center. Just the like of that. And then, of course, once you've done that, we can reattach the pink fin that we lost earlier. And then there we have it. She is in her pink Cybertronian car mode. Let the camera refocus for a second. And yes, if you want to store the gun on the figure, she does have a spot down here, right near it in the back, that you can insert the gun. However, don't insert the gun too deeply because it will pop her legs out. So just be gentle with how much you pressure it in. Just only a little pressure. And it should still make her able to be rolled on a surface. See? Rolls pretty good in that sense. So now we get to my thoughts. What do I think of this version of RC? Like many of the fans, I'm going to be mixed about it. The car mode is pretty good. It's still not perfect, but the transformation between it to this mode is a lot better than what many of the others have been in recent years. So, at least that's been an improvement. The robot mode, unfortunately, is, the big, is going to be the biggest problem. The Studio Series tries to pride itself on being movie-accurate versions of the character. And unfortunately, with them making R.C. a shell former, she's not an accurate representation of the character. As we did see R.C.'s backside numerous times in the film. Gun pop free, so we'll just let it fall out. And most of what you would see of her car mode on her back was this section right here. These pieces here usually formed her shoulder blades. So, that part was the only thing we would ever see. We never saw all the rest of this kibble that was on her. So, unfortunately, it's one that's not a perfect representation again. But it's at least a sign that Hasbro's finally moving it in the right direction. Now, hopefully, now that they've had three RC figures on the shelf at the same time, this one, the Bumblebee version, and the Legacy version, maybe we can go two or three years without seeing RC. And hopefully, in that time, Hasbro will give us a figure that is truly worthy of this legendary character. At any rate, that's my review of the Studio 86 version of RC. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content that we feature here on this channel, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.